Hey guys, what's up? My name is Asif Imnad. Welcome to my channel AI with AI. So in today's video, we are going to talk all about AI, that is artificial intelligence. What the heck is this AI? Why has it gotten so famous nowadays? How this artificial intelligence is evolved over the time? I'm going to tell you a very nice story here. Where this artificial intelligence is used? What are the applications of this artificial intelligence what are the types of artificial intelligence and the final obvious questions which we generally get around is will ai take over humans and my job as well so stay tuned to get all the answers to these questions i will start with a small story here a long long years before when our ancestors were struggling for daily food to survive they used to hunt for a food daily and they used to carry a food over the longer distances from one place to other it was a really difficult time guys and it has become more difficult when they started traveling longer and longer distances initially they have invented a sledge to carry a food but again that was really difficult to pull once this lady was roaming around and she saw a stone rolling down from a slope so they started to search for something which can roll over the surface and that's how the will is invented so her husband has got the idea and he has started actually developing a something which can roll over the surface and that's how the invention of wheel has happened and people were actually got surprised to see that practically and even nowadays you can see that how the invention of wheel has changed the way we live has made our life faster smoother and easier same way the story of a mankind the event that shaped the history and our present when our ancestors invented fire i think the next big invention that has happened is electricity thomas alva edison has invented the light in year 1879 and after some years you can see how this invention has changed our life electricity has become inherent part of our life we cannot even imagine a life without electricity now do you know this guy he is a legendary computer scientist andrew wenge known as one of the most prolific researchers in ai and ml ml as in machine learning and what he said in his seminars is ai is a new electricity not only andrew bill gates has said the next big invention that would change the way we live should be the ways of generating energy like electricity Isn't it crazy? Isn't it amazing? John McCarthy was an American computer scientist called as founding fathers of artificial intelligence. He has made lot of research and many publications in the field of AI. Can a machine think and behave like a humans do? So he made a official statement in 1950s saying that an attempt will be made to find how to make machines use language and form abstractions and concepts to solve a kind of a problems now reserved for humans and improve themselves. You must be surprised to hear that to solve a kind of a problems now which are reserved for humans will be solved by the machines and not only solved by the machines they will improve themselves and this is how inventions after inventions have made a lot of boom in the field of ai has started and we have also started seeing its effect on a mankind create an artificial being has been the dream of man since the birth of science This was the event when world chess champion Garry Kasparov beaten by IBM supercomputer Deep Blue. Can you believe this? This is insane. But wait, do you think it is an AI? No, no. This is pure computer science where great algorithms and fast computing put together to win the game, which was actually consist of 30 custom CPUs and capable of 20 billion moves per minute. This is just an faster computing. Intelligence part is still missing. This was another event when people got amazed. In Jan 13, 2011, IBM's Watson supercomputer destroys human in Jeopardy. I hope you heard Jeopardy. Jeopardy is a famous question answering game where again machine won against human. 
Now this is where machines were started becoming smart, where big data and in-memory clusters were started coming into picture. And IBM's Watson containing 4 TB data includes all Wikipedia, 90 servers, 16 TB of RAM, Hadoop technology and 6 million logic rules. Oh ho ho. This event has actually blown everyone's mind away. Recently, just three years before March 15, 2016, Google's DeepMind beats world number one Lee said all in ancient game Go. But what is so special about this? This is not a normal game guys. Go is a 3000 year old Chinese board game and is considered to be a lot more complex than the chess. Google's DeepMind founder, Demis Husbies, said that now this is not only computation. Go presents an entirely different challenges every time because of the game's incomputable number of moves options. Google's AlphaGo is not just an expert system built with handcrafted rules. Instead, it uses machine learning techniques to figure out itself how to win at Go. Isn't it sounds crazy guys? It figures out itself how to win at Go. Ahead he said, our hope one day these techniques can be extended to solve society's toughest and most pressing problems from climate modeling to complex disease analysis. Another day-to-day -day life practical application of artificial intelligence is image captioning. Image captioning is becoming a repetitive and tedious task for us from a long time. Now the machines will look into the picture. They will not only capture the picture but they will also understand what the object is doing inside the picture. And they will provide a caption accordingly. Fabulous, isn't it? How about art? Can machine be artistic like human? We understand mimicking human is one thing but can machine be an artist? Can they draw? Can they paint? Can they sing? Or can they generate music like we humans do? And the answer is yes. One of the best example of this is Google's Deep Dream. Have you heard this ever? Go and Google it out. Deep Dream is an amazing application, is an amazing technique which is built on neural networks to generate an artistic images. As you can see in the image, this is not human made painting, but this is made by Deep Dream, made by machine. Real time translator. Do you frequently travel to other countries? Then you must be worried about the culture, the language they speak. So now you don't have to worry about this. Google's real time translator will help you understand what is written in other language. You just have to point your camera onto the image and that will convert other language into the native language. And what's not? AI is used everywhere. It is in education. It is in healthcare. It is in transport, it is in security, it is in energy, it is in entertainment and so on. So AI is finding its way in all the domains. Is AI a new field? This term is first tossed a way back. It's been there in the computer science domain from 1950s. But most of them were just the thoughts and the concepts. And we have seen that only in some movies like Star Wars, like Terminators and the Predators. Isn't it guys? A machine that can think and feel. This machine learning is a sub part of AI which was started flourishing around 80s where we need to train machines on huge data and machine will learn from a data and they will provide the predictions. What did I say? Will provide a huge amount of data to the machines and machines will learn from the data and they will come up with the future predictions. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it amazing? Obviously, that was too early to expect in 80s from machines to behave in this way because we had a limitations of computation and also the data. So now, in recent years, the computation has become cheaper and the data has become available. So now we have better computation and a huge data but the problems are also become complex. So the new field has evolved is called as an deep learning in the recent years in 2010. Deep learning uses layered neural networks to solve more complex problems with better accuracy. As said, AI is a part of computer science. To develop a program that can sense, act, reason and adapt.
These four terms will define what exactly artificial intelligence is. So what is sense? Sense is the way we human have senses and depending on the sense we behave. For machines, these are nothing but the sensors like proximity sensor, gyroscope sensor, temperature sensor and so on. Act is when activators are activated to perform some task. For example, when smoke detectors senses the smoke, they will act and the act can be turning on the red light or firing an alarm. So these two terms that is sense and act that we have already solved. The main AI starts when machine will act for reason and adapt. So there should be reason behind the act and adapt is when machines are start becoming smart when they take decisions on themselves and improve over the time like we human do. What did I say? Improve over the time like we human do. That is called as an adapt, right? Machine learning is where algorithms whose performance improves as they expose to more and more data over the time. As you can see in the image, we have drawn a curve against data and the performance. As data increases, the performance increases. But this was okay till some years. As we started exposing more and more data, at a time, machines started giving us flat results. There were no effects on feeding more data. This is where we started looking more and more deep. And this is how a new field, deep learning, come into a picture. So deep learning is more recent technique where deep learning gives you better and better results as you provide more and more data. So data is the key in machine learning and deep learning. So this is the hot new thing. Now this is the graph which clearly shows that deep learning can solve more complex problems as you keep feeding more and more data their performance will keep increasing unlike machine learning. This is where I can say that machine has started coding. Machine learning is where you cannot code. This is the simplest definition provided by Andrew NG. Oh, ho, ho, ho. so if machines are going to code then what we are going to do? So this brings us to the important question that we always worry about. If machines start doing all our work, if they start coding, will they replace us? Will they take our jobs? Will machines take over us? This is the fearful question that I usually get around. Will machines ask us to leave saying that, hey you dumb, this is not your cup of tea so you may take a leave. And I think the shortest answer for this is no. When these questions were asked to Andrew NG, do you know what did he say? He said that worrying about will machines replace me is like worrying about population on Mars. Isn't it crazy? Worrying about machines will replace me is like worrying about population on Mars because we have just started with it. We still have no humans touch the Mars and we are talking about the population on Mars. It's like having a pet. It's like having a dog. But still, we need a trainer to train the dogs, right? So treat machines like a dog. So ask them just to do your work, your repetitive work. So coming to a conclusion, machines are not against us. We are not anywhere yet. We are creating them to help us and to make our life easy. So it is not a competition. It is collaboration. So I'm saying it again. This is not a competition. This is collaboration. So that's it from my side guys. So see you again next time in next video. Till the time, take care and bye-bye.